Hey, it's Susan, and today we're pruning grapevines. All right, so there's lots of ways you can actually go ahead pruning your grapevines. This book shows a couple methods recommended by John Seymour. This is the book, The Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It. Highly recommend that book if it's not in your bookshelf. I like to do my grapevines with the espalier method shown in this diagram here where you have one big main line going up and then you bring the laterals out to the sides. That seems to work well for me. We also use it for our apple trees like this one here in our backyard. Um, it's not quite as neat as and tidy as you might see in some pictures like these. We actually find it creates more of a wall of green, but I really appreciate that effect. Um, so make sure you grab yourself some pruners to get started here. When we did our uh, grape vines, we actually put up those four by four posts there and we strung um, plastic coated wires between them. Um, sort of wires like you'd use for a clothesline actually. And they're spaced seven feet apart and then we're just growing the grapevine up in the middle between the posts and then using the wires to support our laterals going across. Now I often find that pruning grapevines is almost more of an art than a science. Um, there are definitely some rules you need to follow though. One thing is the weather conditions, so just make sure that the plant is dormant when you are pruning it. You don't want there to be any sap flowing that would um, possibly injure the plant, give a spot for disease to come in, or even just suck some of the energy out of the plant. Um, so this is a nice January day here that I am just out here with my pruners um, plugging away on this grapevine. The other thing to keep in mind is that grapes fruit on first and second year wood. Um, so one season, whatever new vines are coming out that season, there's going to be fruit on that. And then whatever was new the previous season, there's going to be fruit that's going to be able to form on that. Anything older than that will not fruit. Um, it could be support, it can be growth, um, but it will not bear fruit for you. So if there's any old branches like that one I'm pulling out right now, um, you want to get those that old wood out of the way um, and let the plant really take and push its energy then into producing those new vines. Um, I also do like to try to keep them contained as much as possible. They always get away from me every year because it just amazes me how long of vines, how long new growth can be put out every year. Um, so you can see I do have two main lines going up there and that is so that I can create new laterals every couple years um, because those new laterals will then produce more fruit because the old laterals by the third year will no longer be producing fruit. They will produce new vines which will produce fruit um, but they themselves do not produce fruit. So I like to just kind of switch those out every once in a while um, and just kind of keep the plant fresh and strong. Also giving a hard prune at least every other year also refreshes the plant, keeps it strong and vibrant so it can really put its energy into that fruit production. Um, I find it's not necessary to do a hard pruning every year. All right, so that, as you can see, is smooth, fresh wood. That was a new vine from last year. It has the little nodules on it, which would have grown grapes. And that rough one is an old vine. So you can see the difference there. The old, rough wood that's not going to be producing anymore versus those newer vines, which is smoother, has the little nodules. And it's out of those nodules that then you would see the blossoms coming in the spring. Um, but as I was saying, you don't really need to do a super hard pruning every year. You can do a lighter pruning just to get rid of all of this extra kind of junk that's overgrown um, every other year. And then you can do a hard pruning every other year opposite that to really get out all of the stuff and give the plant kind of a fresh start. Um, you know, there's great vines in Italy that are like hundreds of years old, probably France too, and places, hundred year old grape vines. I'm sure California has them. Um, here in Indiana, you know, we have these winter hardy varieties um, and we love them. We're able to make our own wine every year. We also have fresh eating grapes for the table. And then we have Concord grapes that we use for um, jellies and for juice. Um, so we have seven total grape vines um, and we find 
that with this method they can be very beautiful, um, very productive. They're great for playing hide and seek behind in the summer because um, they do produce a wall of green. Um, our little chicken friends love hiding underneath them in the summer because they're nice and shady and cool. Um, they will jump up and eat a few of the lower grapes, but that's a great thing about this espalier method. It actually gets a lot of those grapes up high enough and out of the way um, the chickens can't reach them. Um, we do need to watch birds sometimes, but um, for the most part we just try to get to our harvest before the birds do or we use some um, bird netting or insect netting. I actually prefer the insect netting. It's finer. I always worry about uh, birds maybe getting stuck in the bird netting because the squares are bigger. So um, if you get a chance and you want to cover up in case of birds, I would definitely recommend going with the insect netting as opposed to the bird netting. It's also just more cloth-like and easier to deal with. Um, and maybe I'll talk about that in a later video sometime. But here I am, I'm just about done um, pruning this grapevine. So I hope that you learned something about grapes. They're definitely worth having on your urban homestead. We get so much production out of them. And as a perennial, um, they're pretty easy to take care of. So I hope that you'll consider that. Um, and thank you for watching. Have a great day.